Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Sarah Liz and I'm so excited to show you this. We're gonna make five cards today focusing on two die sets. I have the very cute layered mug and the layered mug cat and dog add-on and I am obsessed. These are so versatile and can be used in so many ways. First, we're gonna make a mug shape card using just the very cute layered mug. So I've cut the mug and then there's a piece that goes on the front of the mug just to create a little bit of dimension. And then there's a little piece where you can put your coffee um, and there's like a die that cuts that out. I'm putting the front of the mug in an embossing folder. This one's called Puff Dotty from Spellbinders. But actually I was looking for like a floral um, or anything that has the kind of pattern you would see on a mug. I love mugs that have that sort of raised texture to them. Then I'm taking some Hero Pearls in blue and I'm just adding that to a scrap of cardstock. And with my domed foam, I am tapping into the pearls and then tapping off as much as I can. If I go in with a lot, it's gonna get in between those raised dots and I don't want that. So I'm tapping off and then coming in with a very light hand and just kind of going over the raised areas. I am getting a little bit of it in between, but only a little, and I love how this turned out. I know it's a long way off, but I can't help but think about possibilities for the holidays. I'm spraying my foam with a little bit of water and dabbing it onto a baby wipe, and it comes almost completely clean. It's soft, I can use it for another project. To create my shaped card, I have a piece of cardstock that's about eight by four and a half. It's just a scrap, and I scored and folded it in half. I'm gonna tape the mug die so that that fold line is inside the cut line. So when I run it through doubled over, the card opens up and it's the shape of a mug. Now on that left-hand side, I don't have the full mug shape. So I'm gonna glue this die cut mug that is complete onto the top of it just to round that edge and make everything look neat. Now I'm gonna take my front panel with my Hero Pearls and I'm gonna glue that to the front that layer was so thin that by the time I got to this step, it was dry. I didn't have to really set it aside and wait any longer than necessary. Here's the tiny little piece that I cut out that makes your coffee or your tea or your hot chocolate or whatever it is. And it nestles just right inside. And then especially with the raised texture from the dots, um, it's super dimensional and it kind of, it looks like a real mug. It's so good. To finish this card off, I'm just adding a sentiment. You could add really anything here, um, but I'm using the Picket Fence Studios, You Make the World Better, and it's sort of like a floral cover plate and then this sentiment. We're coming up on the end of the school year and my son is in second grade and we always go back to the teachers he's had before at the beginning and the end of the year and bring them some cards. And so I thought this was perfect for a teacher card, I'm especially thinking of like last year's teacher loves coffee. So this is perfect for her. I'm gonna put something heavy on that because I'm gluing it to a surface that has a lot of texture, but then that will finish off our card. It's so simple. You could mass produce these so, so easily. And it fits perfectly in a four bar envelope. A four bar envelope is just a little bigger than five by three and a half. For our second card, we are gonna use the bare part of our very cute layered mug and add a little face onto the front of him. And we're gonna make a gift card holder. I don't think the die set was designed to be a gift card holder, but I, it's so perfect for it. I can't, I'm so excited. Okay, so we are gonna start by ink blending. This is that front piece we embossed last time. I'm just coming in with some purple ink right on the sides of it to create some dimension, that look of roundness. Then I'm gonna take the whole mug, right? The one that has the handle on it. Most of this is gonna get covered up. So I'm not real worried about it looking perfect. I just want a little bit of color along the edge uh, because that front panel doesn't quite go all the way to the edge and then a little bit onto the handles to continue that look of dimension. I've also cut out some whipped cream to go on the top and that's what we're gonna pull to reveal our gift card. And the die impresses some detail into it to create more dimension here. But I've used glitter cards, so I'm just going over it with an alcohol marker to help that stand out a little bit more. I'm laying the front panel onto my mug and just kind of taping it down so I can line up the die that cuts out like the brown coffee part of it. 
and I'm going to tape that die to the top of the mug. We're going to make a hole. That's where we're going to slide our gift card in and out. Look at that. Look at that. It is perfect for a gift card. Now it's not going to fit all the way behind the mug. It's not quite wide enough, especially at the bottom. But if we cut a hole through the base of the card too, it works perfectly. So I am lining up the mug where I want it and I used my pencil just to trace right where the hole is in the mug and I will line up the die right on top of that and run it through. And now I have matching holes and I will slide the gift card right behind that panel and we'll pop it up with a little bit of thin foam tape and, and it's perfect. It's perfect. This is the thank you text background stamp from Simon Says Stamp and I am putting that on the door of my Misty and then I'm going to line up my card stock onto the stamp, right? Text is really obvious if it's crooked. So then I'll flip my Misty over on top of it and I have a sticky mat in there and the sticky mat will pick it up and keep it so it's lined up right where I need it to be. Um, and all of that text will, will look <laughs> like it's going the right way and not totally cattywampus off the side of my card. If you don't have a Misty, you can just lay the background stamp onto your work surface so that the text is facing up, ink it up just like I did, and then lay your cardstock onto it um, and press it that way instead of trying to put the stamp onto the paper like upside down and you can't see the direction. Uh, background stamps and stencils are some of my favorite ways to quickly add just a little bit of interest and make a card a little something extra, right? And it's so fast and easy. I am adding my mug onto my card base and I put glue all over the back, but I didn't put it right at that strip above the hole we made. That was an oops. I probably should have done that. In my head, I was thinking that I needed to attach bear ears, but, but I didn't. So um, I'm assembling the face. This comes together really quickly. And actually, I think I lied to you earlier. I said I was using just the very cute layered mug, but the eyelashes, come from the cat and dog add-on. Those are the cat's eyes. And then we're gonna add a little heart to the bear's nose, which is the cat's nose. So sorry about that. Um, but certainly you could make this without those two pieces if you just wanna use the one very cute layered mug set. Then I have assembled the ears. There's like a little stitched piece, that cream piece that makes the inside of the ear. Um, and then these eyes, the dots, it's not just a circle. There's like a, an impressed detail. So there's a little dot um, that's raised inside of that circle. I thought about coming in and adding a white highlight, but I was too nervous. <laughs> I was too nervous. Do you do this? Um, so here I've added a little bit of removable adhesive to my whipped cream just to make sure everything is working. And I've lined up the whipped cream right in place and I've got my gift card hanging through the back and that's how I knew where to put my foam tape. Okay, so I'm leaving enough room for it to fit all the way down in there and then I added a little bit of glue on top of my foam tape so I've got some wiggle room and I will start at the top while I'm lining it up. My philosophy is that if it's top folding card, I can trim off of either side, I can trim off the bottom, I just can't <laughs> trim off the top. So I always start at the top. I've decided to layer up my whipped cream. It's the same die cut, just a plain white piece of cardstock since that is our pull tab. And I was worried a little bit um, that it wasn't gonna be strong enough. That glitter card is 65 pound. Then I am adding the word pull to one of the ears using the Paper Crafting Magic stamp set. I use this one a lot. Um, you know that, you're here, you're watching my channel. I love an interactive card and it fits just perfectly. Uh, and I got, I got real brave and stamped it, free range stamping, right? And it, and it came out well. So I'm going to add that right behind the whipped cream, just barely covering it. Um, and I'm going to get a little brave here as well. I'm going to start like testing it and pulling everything in and out of the card before that glue is really dry. You guys should let your glue dry, right? Just let it dry. I've added my removable adhesive again. Uh, and I, this isn't probably the gift card that's going to go in there, but it helps me kind of figure out if everything fits and then I'll probably keep it in there. I'll forget that it's in there. If I'm honest, <laughs> I'll forget that it's there. Um, but it'll be a nice surprise for me later on when I go to actually give this card to somebody. For a little sparkle and shine, I am adding the white sparkle spots from Trinity Stamps. 
These are almost completely flat. There's no dimension to them, but there's some like glittery business on there that's not rub off. And I love that. And that finishes our card. It is a gift card holder without any extra dies. I am in love. Next, we are going to really focus on using that cat and dog add-on. Here, you don't need the very cute layered mug set. This is really just putting cute faces on whatever you have. I have this balloon die set from Trinity Stamps. My version is no longer available, but they have one that's really similar called Celebration Balloons. Um, and ignore the torn paper on this blue balloon. We're going to cover it up. Uh, I am building my dog and it's this little dog, this little puppy is so cute. So there's like a spot for his eyes. So that's what I glued down first. And then his nose for his eyes, um, it cuts out a couple little holes from the black circle for his eyes. So I used my circle die set just to cut out two white circles that are slightly smaller and stick that behind there. I saw Carrie Rhodes do that and it was super slick, but you certainly could just cut a scrap of white cardstock and that would work fine too. And then I'm going to attach my eyes um, to my balloon. I'm just, I'm thinking of all the different things I could put these faces on. Certainly you can add them to that mug set. You can add them right to balloons. You can add these to, I'm thinking about like making a gift, a present or something and putting the critter face, whichever one you use on the gift. I've seen the Trinity Stamps team put them on hearts and ice cream and cupcakes. We're going to do something with a cupcake a little bit later on. It's just, it's so versatile. And you can see here, like they're both meant for that mug, but we're using two different size balloons and it adapts really, really well. So I've added the second spot. There's one kind of up towards the right um, side of his head and I trimmed it a little bit. It wasn't perfectly round, it, right? It's designed to fit on the mug, but that was easy enough. And then I've added his ears and some navy cardstock. Next, we're gonna put our little cat together and I thought it was fun to give the cat some mismatched ears. <laughs> so we have a dark pink and a light pink. And I just used some cream card stock for the inside of the ears since pink was already taken. Um, and then here again are those eyelash eyes. You can mix and match these eyes for all the different critters. And I love that. Again, they're all sort of proportioned the same way. Uh, the dog has these tiny little eyebrows that I think are so, so cute. When you put him on the bear, he looks totally startled adorable then the cat also has these little like stripes to put on the top of i'm gonna call it a girl the top of her head uh, and those fit beautifully there's just a little bit of rounding to the tops of them if there wasn't you could trim it off but it they fit really nicely and then i will glue my ears just behind the balloon when I go to put these onto my card base, they are gonna overhang just a little bit. And this is a five by seven card, right? I chose um, not the largest balloon, like they're big balloons in this set. You can make a balloon card very easily that fits in an A2 envelope. Um, so this is the second largest and third largest balloons. And I thought about trimming off around the edge so that everything fits squarely and it would go in the envelope, but for so many of my cards, I hand deliver them. And especially something like this, um, it's probably going to either my sister who is obsessed with cats. She has a cat, his name is Bubs, uh, <laughs> right? So maybe it's for her or maybe it's for one of the many, many young people. Um, I have a couple little kids and nieces and nephews all the same age. So I didn't trim it, but, but you certainly could. I'm going to start to glue everything to my card base. So I'm doing the dog first and then there are some balloon strings. There's a straight string and then there's this curvy string in my set. Um, and I, I'm not real neat and tidy here when I'm trying to put this down. Uh, if I wanted to make sure the glue wasn't squeezing out the edges, I would have taken my finger and sort of run it along the string just to smooth that out before I laid it down but a lot of it's gonna get covered. We're gonna put our sentiment towards the bottom. So again, I wasn't real worried about it and it meant I didn't have to be quite as dainty. Um, and then we'll put our second string on there. And I, I'm using my Trinity Stamps pickup tool. 
this one has a sort of a blunter tip. You'll see me a lot of times in videos, I have a wooden one and it is super sharp and pokey, but I don't scrape glue up with it because it scratches the cardstock. The Trinity Stamps one is very slightly rounded on the end. And so it works better for things like picking up glue, um, moving things around when I'm more, especially if I'm using like a shiny cardstock or something like that. So um, it's a really useful tool. I'm using the Simply Sentimental Birthday Stamp Set and coordinating dies from Trinity Stamps for our sentiment on this card. Off camera, I used double-sided adhesive and ran the, that birthday die through my die cut machine three times, twice from heavyweight white cardstock, and I adhered those together already. And then you just watched me assemble it with my glitter cardstock on top. And again, I used some double-sided adhesive on that. So they're just like stickers and they're really easy to put together. I used the birthday die and I cut it out of the shadow so that I had like a little template for putting th everything in and making sure that it was straight um, and spaced correctly. Sometimes I can eyeball that in the shadow and sometimes I can't. So then I'm using my fine tip glue and I'm just adding these one at a time. On the Y, some of those pieces are super, super thin. So I am very quickly working to peel back that sort of shadow layer with, with the letter holes in it to make sure that nothing's stuck on there. Um, and then before I peel the whole thing off, I will go in to add the tittle on the eye. Uh, I have not stacked those yet. I find that that is easiest to do straight onto my card or my shadow die. So I added one in there. I'll remove the rest of that birthday shadow. And then <laughs> for better or worse, there's double-sided adhesive on the backs of these little dots, the tittle on the eye. And that was maybe the hardest part of this whole thing right? Using that double-sided adhesive and turning them into stickers, that was the easiest time I've ever had trying to put together some layered individual letters. So uh, worth it, I think. I like the dimension on it. There is then in the stamp set, this little bitty happy stamp. And I am stamping that three times in some white pigment ink. And I'll add my super fine detail white embossing powder because it's a pretty dainty image and heat set that. Then there's a little tiny uh, rectangle die that will cut out the happy or there's a couple other very small words in that set. And then I will trim off the ends um, so that it's just a little tighter around the word uh, and that will help finish off my sentiment. So when I go to add this to my card, I'm gonna use glue for the birthday piece of it. But when we get to the happy, I'm gonna add a little bit of foam tape, some thin foam tape on there because the birthday letters have that dimension already because we stacked them up. This one, it's just one millimeter foam. I think standard foam tape, most foam tape is two millimeters. I like that this then kind of matches the dimension that we have in the birthday. Again, I'm using the white sparkle spots to finish this off. They're a little bit iridescent. And so it's picking up like whatever other colors are on there. It, I am a little bit obsessed with these. Um, that will finish off our third card for today. And then we're moving on to this one. I've had this die set for, I don't know, a while, maybe a year. And, and my son likes to steal it. This is his favorite die set. And he'll put together like a purple and orange cupcake. The thing is, it's so quick and easy to put together. And I think it's a really impactful card right it's a shaped card i love a shaped card and so i've just cut up the pieces this is the cake part and you will see just a little bit of that even after we put the frosting on the cupcake so i've used some cream cardstock and then i just added a little bit of like a light light brown ink um, to make it look a little more baked on and then for the wrapper there are these embossed lines on the wrapper and i'm coming in with a teeny tiny little blending brush and I'm adding a little bit of ink in those lines. It will dry back and soften a little bit, but to help that along, I'm also coming in with my blending buddy and just adding some overall color to tie everything together. We're also gonna cover up a fair bit of that with our sentiment. So I have the same ink out and this is not fancy. I cut the frosting out twice. And this one, 
I added some ink just to make it easier for you and me to see the embossed detail for the frosting. And I'm gonna turn this into a stencil. Do you have to do this? No, and it's probably faster to like take a marker, like a really light Copic um, and go into those impressed lines if you wanna add a little extra detail. But I love the look of this. So I'm just one at a time kind of cutting along the base of that line and I'll flip it over sometimes just to smooth out um, the curve of it. And then I take my blending buddy and a very light hand and I am just pulling upward. So we have from dark to fading out to nothing, this little bit of dimension created in our frosting. And it's soft and beautiful. And it's a very, very pale purple. So it's coordinating with the wrapper from our cupcake. I went over the whole thing with a glitter gloss aqua shimmer pen. And then I'll start adding my pieces onto my shape card. So I have the cupcake wrapper here and I've cut this base out of some shimmer cardstock where one side is shimmery and the inside is not so it's really easy to write your greeting that whole thing cuts out a single layer of cardstock it's unique I think a lot of times when we're cutting a shape card we're folding a piece of paper in half and trying to run the die through to cut through two layers of thick cardstock you don't have to do that with this one right? It's just one sheet of cardstock and it cuts out both sides um, and then you just fold it in half and it's so easy. I have decided to use the cat eyes with eyelashes and the cat mouth and we're not making an animal. These are cute, cute pieces to make a face of any kind. You don't have to put it on a cupcake, put it on whatever you want, right? Put it on the outside of your envelope when you're mailing it to create a fun little face arriving in the mail. Like it, I can't say it enough. These two die sets have so many uses. I, I, yeah, I'm just absolutely in love. This wish sentiment comes in that same cupcake set. And so I have layered up two layers of white cardstock and then I have some pink cardstock and I have offset the pink just a little bit. So the white functions like a drop shadow behind it. And I'm gonna add some shimmer pen uh, on top of the pink cardstock, just to tie that together with the cupcake frosting that's already on there. And I will glue that down to the base of my card. If you like shape cards, Trinity Stamps has a number of die sets like this cupcake one. So there's a mug card die, not the mug we just used, but it's also this gift card holder and it's really cool. There's a snow globe, there's a teacup. They have a surprising number of other large dies that aren't meant to be shape cards that you could turn into shape cards. I, they're just, they do such a good job. So I'm adding the very last bits of my wish, the little tittle on the eye, and I will add my shimmer pen to that one. And that finishes up our card. For our last card for today, we are gonna use all the faces and make an adorable stacked set of critters. So this is the embossed circle windows and panels slimline die set. And I cut the smaller rectangle and then there's a piece that cuts out three circles from this panel. You wouldn't need to use that die set to do this, but I gotta tell you, it, I bought it cause it was on sale and then I used it and I was like, oh, that's so much easier than trying to space out my circles and make sure that they're evenly spaced. If you are gonna use just a circle die, I would start with the two outside circles and make sure that they are the same distance away from the top and bottom edges, and then just center the middle circle. That seems like, I don't know, the easiest way to get everything kind of lined up there. To some extent, we're just assembling things like we were before. So I laid my light blue panel on top of my glitter cardstock panel. Um, I cut this out using the largest of the two rectangle dies. So it's eight and a half by three and a half. It's just a standard slimline size. But this is part of their modern embossed series. And so there is just this little bit of embossing around the edges of the cardstock and then around the edges on those circles that I think is really pretty. 
Um, I'm assembling my critters and placing the faces on the inside on that glitter cardstock. I've switched adhesive for this because it's a slick surface. So this is my Nouveau Deluxe adhesive. And then for the ears on each of them, I am adding those to the blue panel and we're gonna pop it up just a little bit. You absolutely 100% could turn this into a bunch of shakers, right? I would probably enclose each face separately um, and I'd probably use like minimal sequins so I'm not covering up those cute, cute faces, but that would be an awful lot of fun. And I might try that next time. So here at the top, I am assembling my cat face and you're gonna notice in just a minute, I'm gonna add the little heart for the nose. That is not the heart that comes in this set. It's not. <laughs> my eight-year-old said it was okay for me to tell you that he took off with the cat face because he loves the cat, but he didn't. I just, it, it it's on my desk somewhere. I hope, I hope. You guys, I don't lose dyes. It doesn't happen. And so I am certain it's gonna show up sooner or later. I have the rest of the dies from these two sets on two pieces of like magnet sheet. I have no idea what I what happened to it. So I just grabbed another heart die. I don't even know where it's from. I have a little bin of like leftover dies from the last time I made something that has hearts on it. Um, I keep all of my sort of basic shapes in a bin. I have some shelving that sits right behind my desk. So anyway, it's a different heart. <laughs> to add my whiskers on, I am just using once again my Trinity Stamps pickup tool and I'm adding the glue directly to the glitter card. It's that Nouveau Deluxe adhesive and running little lines of it right along where I want them. And actually, that's probably the easiest way I have found yet no matter what surface you're adhering those whiskers to. Visually, we kind of know like where the whiskers go and where they should be spaced. So um, I think from, from here on out, I will just add like three little whisker lines of glue straight onto my cardstock. And then it's easy enough just to pick those up and lay them on top of, of the glue lines. So I have added a little bit of foam tape. This is again, my one millimeter foam tape. I, I like a thinner foam, a thinner lift a lot of times because then if I wanna pop something up on top of that lifted panel, I'm not getting a little ridiculous. I've added glue onto the foam because like you just saw, I thought I had it lined up. And then when I looked at the bottom, those margins weren't even. So it gives me time, even if this weren't glitter card, I would have a little bit of time to kind of lift that up and move it and get it perfectly centered like I'd like. Um, this is the Photo Play birthday stamp set and the photo play sentiment strips dies. These sentiments are tiny. They are teeny, teeny, tiny. So I've taken Let's Celebrate and stamped it just onto some scrap paper. And then I'm putting my clear sticky mat over top of that. And I will line up the sentiment strip die over top so that I have the same amount of space on either side of Let's Celebrate. And then I will stamp that twice onto my little bitty sentiment strip. By the time I had put all the critter faces on this card, I hadn't left room for a sentiment. <laughs> so this is my go-to when I am not sure where I'm gonna be able to fit it in. Um, so I'm also adding some fortune teller embellishments from Trinity Stamps. They're a slightly cloudy, slightly iridescent bobble. They come in a couple of sizes, all in that one little pack. Um, and I'm gonna add those around. They're gonna pick up whatever colors are nearby. And what you can't tell right now is that the Let's Celebrate isn't glued on yet. Anyway, I'll get there when it falls off later. These are the five cards we've made today. That first one, I think visually is my favorite, but I'm feeling kind of clever with that gift card holder. So anyway, I would love to know what is your favorite card? Is it one of the shape cards? Do you like the cats or the dogs or the bears? Do you like a slim line? That, we have a bunch of different sizes in here too. I wanna know all the things. Leave me a comment below, give it a thumbs up, share it with somebody else, and please consider subscribing. And I will see you next time.